With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? Well, it's one that took place on the state plains of eastern New Mexico, where after the Lincoln County War, there were more gunslingers per ranch than cowboys. Jesse Chisholm's jingle bob spread ruled the Pecos country. But on the stake plains, it was the Crossed Arrow Ranch. After a delivery of cattle in Texas, California and I headed back for the Bar 20. We planned to go as far as Albuquerque on the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. At a good our car had picked up a set of unusual guests. Sure, Hoppy, look at that pretty female up there. Ain't that uh, Princess Stuttgart, boss lady of the Crossed Arrow? Uh-huh, could be, California. She has a regular following. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, you mean them uh, hombres with her? Yeah. Reckon they're her guards. Folks say she's got more cows than Jesse Chisholm. And her land, <laughs> well, that runs from the Canadian River plumb down to Mexico. And not only that, she's supposed to be related to the king of, uh, uh, Frank of, uh, uh Fran... Uh... Francovia. But she doesn't look too happy about it. Uh-oh. One of her men is coming back here. Sorry, gents. Got to ask you to move you along to the other coach. The princess wants privacy. She, uh, what? The other car is full, stranger. There's no room. Make room. Much as we'd like to oblige the lady's whims, I don't think we'll stand all the way to Albuquerque. She ain't no lady. She's Princess Zelda Stuttgart. Well, I won't argue the point, but we're not... What gonna... do I have to do? Shoot you both and drag you out? <laughs> Hoppy, get him. Wild Bill Hickok without whiskers. Never mind my age, Pop. The name's Devlin. Heck, Devlin, late of uh, Lincoln. That's right. Now, you're going to vamoose easy-like? No, we're not, Devlin. Some folks just don't hear good. Sorry. <laughs> so am I. You shouldn't flash guns on strangers. Uh, here, what's going on? What happened to Devlin? Oh, he just tried to get the draw on Hoppy and got slugged for his pain. What? You beat Devlin's guns with your fist? That's the size of it. Riff raff ruffians. Fly and tip them. <laughs> well, after what they did to Devlin? And not me, Princess. I'm just your foreman, not a prize fighter. Devlin, get up. Strangers, didn't Devlin tell you I wanted privacy? Yeah, he told us, ma'am. Well, go. Shoo! Scott! Oh, Devlin, get up. Hoppy, you tell this kid we ain't her servant. Kid! Kid, you dare call me? Oh, Devlin, get up. Oh, oh. oh he's gonna make it. Oh, what hit me? You, why, you low down. <coughs> oh, no, ain't that plum awful? He tried to draw on Hoppy again. Devlin, how dare you let this brute strike you? Get up. Oh, let him stay down, ma'am. On his feet, he just gets into trouble. Wait. Wait, that face. I wonder. Lions, take a look at him. Is it possible we have found him? Note the strong Bulgarian jaw. The cold blue Bulgarian eyes. Uh, yeah. He does look a lot like those pictures. Turn around, mister. Your first name. What? Uh, now, wait. I... It's William, but Turn what a... around, I said. There. There, the light is better. Lions, it must be. We found him right under our noses. You found what? Who? You. You are Prince William of the royal family of Bergavia. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Meets His Match. Hoppy and California's train trip to Albuquerque is strangely interrupted by the fabulous Princess Iselda Stuttgart, young owner of the huge Crossed Arrow Ranch. She announces that Hoppy is really a prince. Stop, wait, hold up. Whoa! Shh, I will not hold up, whoa. 
I have positive information that the heir to the title, Prince of Bergavia, is here in New Mexico. You are that prince. You are the image of your grandfather, whose picture I have in my possession. Poppy, uh, you really... Oh, of the... course not. She's loco. Fair prince, will you join my company? I have much to say to you. Now, let's be calm. My name's Cassidy. I'm a cowpuncher. I'm not a prince of Bergavia or any other place. Now, good day. But the family resemblance, it is unmistakable. You must be. Princess Zelda, understand me. I don't want a title. I just want to be plain hop along, Cassidy. You, you prefer horses to me? Me, the Princess Isalda? Well, now that you put it that way, well, so long, Princess. Do we have to stay here in Albuquerque tonight? You know I just hate hotel rooms. Well, I'm not fond of myself, California. But I want to give that stone bruise on Topper's hoof another day's rest before I ride him. Well, all right. Uh, but I sure don't like the fact that the princess and her crew get off from here, too. That female's got some kind of ideas about you still. Uh-huh. I wonder why she took so much interest in me. My being a prince or not a prince wouldn't cause that kind of interest. And she said she'd been looking for me. Then you are Prince William. Uh, hail to your fair prince. I'll hail uh, you, why you... <laughs> oh, you <laughs> want to wrestle, eh? I'll put a whole ton of you on me. Say the green lizard. What is this? Uh, uh-huh. Oh, who are you? I am Pasquale. Looking for a fight, Pasquale? Uh, join us. <laughs> oh, no, senores. No, no. Pasquale is a man of peace. I've not killed a man in uh, one, two, three... Uh, Oh, he's weak now. That's good for you, eh? Oh, see. Sometimes it's only one day. Always there is some hombre that wants to fight. Who Pasquale is, uh, what you say, the sheep. Goat. Uh, that's what I say. But I'm not come to talk about sheeps. I'm come to tell you the most gracious princess, Isalda, wants honor you with dinner tonight. Hoppy, oh, I told you. Uh-huh. Uh, Pasquale, tell the princess no thanks. Isn't that so? You come. He so. We don't come. It's too bad. Pasquale gets so very mad. And when Pasquale gets mad, all his vaqueros get mad too. You come. He so. We come. William, I am so delighted you decided to join us. Your invitation was hard to refuse. Dang near impossible. This is Papa Googie, my favorite uncle. Papa Googie is your uncle? Yeah, that is, I am called Papa Googie, but I am not Papa, but uncle. That is, they Papa call me. You understand, no? No. That's the trouble with this country. No one can language to understand without I explain to myself what they are saying. You will have to excuse Papa Googie. He is newly arrived. Perhaps we should get down to business, Prince William. I don't suppose it'll do any good to tell you I'm not a prince. After the proof Devlin found in your saddlebags, not hardly. Proof? What are you talking about? The letters from your esteemed cousin, King of Bergavia. What? Uh, oh, now, Hoppy, Letters are addressed you, uh... to me? What? That's ridiculous. They were addressed dear cousin, naturally. But your possession of them, plus your family characteristics, is quite enough proof for me. <laughs> but I'm glad you're nice-looking. It makes it much easier. Look, this joke has gone far enough. I'm no prince, but I sure want some questions answered. Why the gunman to threaten us? Who planted letters in my saddlebag? Gunmen? <laughs> you mean Devlin and Pasquale? Why, ever since my father died a year ago, they have been perfect lambs around me. Especially Devlin. That's interesting, but a little hard to believe. This whole thing is getting silly. Silly? Money is silly never. If you will only stop being so impatient and cooperate, I can assure you a handsome reward, fair prince. Like what? A bullet in the back? Oh, my dear, no. Papa Googie and I have decided your share will be one million dollars, paid in gold. Hoppy, my ears is busted. Gosh, you should have heard what I thought I heard. I did. Uh, you did? Well, well, come on, then. She's as local as two ring-tailed buzzards in a barrel of white mule. Wait. 
You gentlemen should first take a peek at the doorway. Pasquale. Uh, devil. Yes, he's come with the bang-bangs. What's the idea, Princess? Just that you aren't leaving, my dear Prince. I've no intentions of letting you escape and make me forfeit a fortune. Oh, lady, ain't you forgetting you already got a fortune? What's that got to do with it? I want more. Sorry, not even for a million dollars do I want to get tied up in this deal. But it is perfectly honest. I swear it is. Sure, sure. It's a Sunday school picnic where all is truth and light. That's why you got gunmen at the doors. Where's your foreman, Lyons? He's the only one not around. He upstairs searching our room? Lyons, I sent home to take care of the ranch when Pascal rode in. Please, this is very serious. And the offer of a million in gold stands. Devlin! Well, it can stand. Wish. De Crazy is a prince man. Wish. Yes, Princess. Is he going back to the ranch okay? He is not. He he is proving to be stubborn. I didn't tell you before, but the reason I wanted him. Don't matter to me, Princess. Whatever you do is right, you know that. Well, this is still going to come as a shock. I am sorry, but it means millions to me. Yes, I tell him. Why you stumble like a blushing maid, Derry? Well, ha uh, <laughs> ha ha, Papa Googie. I think the princess is in love. Cassidy! Prince, you are overstepping yourself. Devlin, you may as well know it. I was going to wait until we were home, but... Well, the Prince Cassidy and I are going to be married. Now. But, wait a uh, minute. But, Zelda, you can't. He's a stranger. You just can't marry him. Please, stop all this babbling. Get me a minister, Zeblin, and hurry. Tell Pasquale to leave his men around the hotel and at the stable where their horses are. I don't want them to escape. Bring the minister to my room. We'll hold the ceremonies there. Papa, my arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. What a wedding for a princess. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Uh, this is impossible. It's it's local. I won't do it. I will not. I... And do you, Iselda Marguerite Stuttgart? Take this man, William Cassidy, to be your lawful wedded husband? I... I do. Do you, William Cassidy, take this woman, the Zelda Marguerite Stuttgart, to be your lawful wedded wife? No. Had a boy, Hoppy. Sure he does, Preach. In five seconds, you're going to be married to the deadest bachelor in New Mexico, Cassidy. Now, do you answer right, or does this gun in your ribs go off? Shoot and be hanged. Better at least think of your partner. He gets it, too, if you don't say them words, and pronto. Uh, uh, this is highly irregular. Uh, perhaps... Uh, uh, Hoppy, don't mind me. Don't, don't... Shut up. Well, Cassidy? I'll restate the question. And do you, William Cassidy, take this woman, his elder Marguerite Stuttgart, to be your lawful wedded wife? Uh, I do. Then I now pronounce you man and wife. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Meets His Match. On the way back to the Bar 20, Hoppy is taken to be Prince William of Bergavia by Princess Iselda Stuttgart, owner of the huge crossed Arrow Ranch. Further proof was found planted in Hoppy's saddlebags, whereupon the Princess Iselda promptly offered him a million dollars in gold to cooperate. Hoppy refused. But under threat of death to California, he gives in and finds himself now the husband of Princess Iselda. It is an unhappy newlywed that now rides to the crossed arrow. Gee, Hoppy, uh, oh, excuse me, Prince Hoppy, <laughs> uh, this ain't so bad. Now we own half of the crossed arrow. You're rich. Yeah. My husband, we can't here for tonight. I'm afraid your night will be slightly uncomfortable. I shall have to have you tied up and guarded. Will you mind so terribly? <laughs> mind? Princess, I'll be delighted. Hoppy, this seems like a darn uncomfortable way to treat a prince and his partner. Uh, tell him to let us loose. These ropes hurt. <laughs> Not on your life. I know when I'm well off. Besides, as long as they're not watching us, we may be able to escape. Not watching? Hoppy, ain't you forgetting Mr. Heck Devlin is sitting there glaring at us? Hardly. I'm depending on him. You're... Huh? Sure. Hey, psst. 
Devlin. What is it? Come on over. Yeah? What do you want? I figure it's what you want, Devlin. You're in love with the princess, aren't you? I mean, very funny. Suppose I am. You'd like to see us out of the way, then. If you were to untie our ropes and look the other way, I can promise you I'd ride out of her life for good. All right, I'll do it. But by heaven, you'd better be right. Here, I'll cut your ropes. There. That does it. Ah, oh, thanks, Devlin. We'll never forget this. Wait. There's one thing about this you should know. Hoppy, Baswell's I... getting up. Sorry, Devlin. No time for it now. Come on, California. Good luck. Hey, what is this? The horses. Don't wake the saddle. Stop. Devlin, shoot. We must stop them. Come on, Devlin. Hoppy, that sure was an error escape. My legs is nearly busted from hugging this slick-sided critter. <laughs> well, it's daylight. I guess we can take a chance now, begin to circle around as soon as we get through this draw. Yeah, you mean we've been traveling away from the bar, Twenty? Yeah, we had to lose Pasquale and his men. Ah, but we're free now. They'll never catch us. Bobby, there's men above us in the sides of the draw. Freeze and pull up those horses. It's lions. Welcome to the crossed arrow. <laughs> well, you're home, Prince. So you caught us. How'd you know we'd escaped? I didn't. The princess sent a fast rider ahead of the main party with the news about your marriage. I was heading out to meet him when you come riding along. You're lucky we didn't have no guns. You wouldn't have took her so easy. <laughs> I don't doubt it. You two have plenty of nerve. Well, here's where you stay. Uh, thanks a lot. Nothing like a dirty storehouse for comfort. You know, I can't figure you out, Cassidy. Why are you so set against getting a free million? Plus the prettiest young gal in the territory for a wife. You wouldn't understand, Lion. Well, you're nuts, Cassidy. This deal is nothing but good for you. Maybe I don't like being framed or forced into things. And, mister, I am warning you. If I don't get some satisfaction soon, I'm going to take you and this spread apart piece by piece, guns or no guns. Well, Lions, you better get and get fast. Yeah, well, yeah, yes, perhaps you're right. <clears throat> Hoppy, don't scare me like that. I thought you was going to jump him for sure, gun and all. I was. And next time, maybe I will. Yeah. Next time he comes in that door, I'm going to get the truth out of him if I have to swallow six slugs to do it. Hoppy, he's coming. Well, it's about time we've been here all day. We jump him, right? Yeah. yeah. Help! Help! Murder! Help! Papa Googie. Uh, we thought it was a lion. Well, maybe it's just as well. You ought to know some answers, Papa Googie. Start talking. Talking? Wish I'm being dead to kill. Only once I am talking. The poor prince, you are no gentleman. Never mind that. Tell me what this is all about or I'll... Uh, wait, wait. Shh. That is, I am here by. Go on and make it short. It is short. It is that my niece, your wife, she is nearly 21 age of years. Well, what's that got to do with this? Please, please, I am telling. I learned in Francovia a few months ago that the royal treasury voted my niece a dowry of 600 million facitas. I hasten here to come. 600 million? Uh, uh, how much is that in American dinero? Uh, dinero? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In American, it is five million dollars. You mean she gets five million dollars when she gets married? Well, it is supposedly her husband that money he receives. Hoppy, that's you. You get five million now. It's not, not so, not quite. My niece feels that uh, one is a fair share to you. One four, she will keep for herself. But why me? Why was I picked? And what's all this business about my being a prince? Ah, uh, but you are. That is why you are picked. According to ancient custom, to receive her dowry, the princess of Francovia must marry before she is 21 and enter the royal family of Bukavia. You are the last line of that member. But those letters were fakes. I'm not the prince. Papa Googie, tell me, what happens as a result of the marriage? Nothing is happening. You and my niece go to Francovia, show that you are married, which is 600 million facitas. So that's it. We have to go and leave the ranch. Papa Googie, take us to the princess at once. Uh, oh, should you not make trouble plenty? We won't, but someone else may. Come on, I'm going to bust a frame up wide open. And 
that's the story, Princess. Those letters were made up beforehand, and as soon as you found someone who looked the part, they were planted to make sure you were taken in. You mean they are forgeries? But, Papa Googie, you said the prince was here in New Mexico. Yes, many are men in New Mexico. He is here. But where? Prince, that is Mr. Cassidy, that is husband. Why was this done? Why were the letters planted? To make sure you married the supposed prince and left for Francovia. This Pasquale is a big-time outlaw. And running the southern half of your spread, he could clean you out. So, it's Pasquale that is full of cues. Now, stand very still or I shoot the ears off. Yeah, I accuse you, Pasquale. You tried to get half the cross there by winning the princess in marriage. But Devlin was the better man. She fell for him. And he was too dangerous for you to try and brace, so you framed me. But that's ridiculous. Pasquale didn't even know about my dowry and its condition. It's true. How do you explain that, Senor Prince? Simple. The same way I explain how the letters were planted in my saddlebags before you arrived in Albuquerque. You weren't the brains of this plot. Only the guns and muscle. Yes, but if he is not, who is? The one man who had to know what was planned. The man who was to be left in charge of the ranch. Lyons. He knew about it. I told him. Check. Your foreman, Lyons. He and Pasquale cooked up the deal together. With you, your husband, and Papa Googie gone, they would have stolen every head of stock you have. The biggest wrestling scheme on record. Ah, so this is the story. You can prove this thing? <laughs> Naturally. Lyons confessed fast when he thought I was going to, well, persuade him. California's guarding him now. I see. He's plain you are a hard man, senor. And you know the cards when you see them. You picked bad partners, Pasquale. Lyons showed the white feather the first time we met. He talked all right. Talked you right in the prison. Isn't that so? Come in, senor. Quickly, in front of me. Wait a minute. Now, now, you will act as shield. You'll be very careful as we move. Don't, Pasquale. It's not his fault. If I hadn't been such a greedy little fool, I'd never have married him. Listen, Thor, not your fault, she says. You're the one thing that we don't think of. An honest man. Oh, he's fully. Pasquale, you can't get away. Devlin the blow. Devlin, bah. You're a very smart man. It's too bad you will now be very dead one, too. That is as far enough. Now I make a widow of your lovely wife. Pasquale! Devlin! Stand still, Cassidy. You are my shield, remember? Drop those guns, Pasquale. I'm coming for you. Come along. I am willing. You can kill Cassidy for me. Get back, Devlin. He'll kill you. Get back. Now, back to Hop Along Cassidy. Cassidy, you all right? Sure, but Pasquale's mighty dead, I'm afraid. That was nice shooting. Hey, you were hit. I just swinged my arm. You acted quick falling like that. Gave me just the second I needed. Your men got Pasquale's vicaros in hand? Like a bunch of lambs. There won't be any trouble without Pasquale to lead them. And a few of my men that were for lions have left for cooler climates. <laughs> that reminds me. I had to go tell Lyons that Pasquale confessed everything. But I was listening outside. You told Pasquale that Lyons had done the confessing. I didn't exactly tell you the truth. Pasquale knew Lyons was a coward. He had to believe me. Oh, Devlin, Devlin, you're wounded. Oh, it's all my fault. I, I feel like such a little fool. You sure acted the part, honey. But you won't anymore. You're going to be a lady if it killed you. Well, I was grateful. But if you're going to act so impertinent, Mr. Devlin, I'll... You'll shut up first thing. And come here. Oh, yes. Yes. Hmm. What a spot for a husband. Oh, oh, I forgot. I can't kiss you. I'm his wife. Shut up and pucker up. That minister was a phony. I hired him to fake the marriage. He's really Albuquerque's undertaker. Undertaker? undertaker. I had to, hmm. honey. If I tried to stop you from marrying Cassidy, you were just stubborn enough to fire me and really get hitched. You ain't marrying nobody but me, savvy? I savvy, boss. Cassidy, I, uh, I'd admire it if you'd stand up for me. Ha, 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 stand up for you? Man, I'm going to give the bride away. <laughs> well, Hoppy's royal welcome turned into a not-so-welcome brush with death. 
And it didn't take long to prove that Hoppy hadn't met his match. Hoppy and California ride into another exciting adventure when they meet up with a girl gunfighter and Indians on the warpath and discover that Apaches don't need guns. Up Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Hoppy Meets His Match was written by Herb Purdom with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. We call this Apaches Don't Need Guns. It began one evening when we were camped near Fort Los Alamos, Arizona. California and I had delivered a herd of beef to the San Carlos Indian Reservation and were headed back to the Bar 20. That night after dinner, we were washing our tinware with sand. I noticed that California was more on edge than usual. Hoppy, <clears throat> I don't like it. I feel plum crawly thinking about that Nagodo and his mescaleros taking the war path. Well, I'm not exactly happy to have Apaches so close, but the fort's only 20 miles away and it's nearly dark. Apaches hate to fight in the dark. Sure, but just the same, the hair in the back of my neck feels like it's going to stand up. <laughs> well, there. I'm done. Give me your plate and I'll put them away. California, quiet. Wait. Something's moving. Engines. I'll get my long gun. Douse the fire. No, wait. There's one man coming toward us. There he is. Hoppy. Is he drunk? Uh, hello there. Come on and sit. An arrow on his back. Get out beyond the firelight and see if he was followed. Right. Uh, didn't penetrate very deep. Well, no wonder. Two wrappings of buffalo hide. Must be an Indian fighter, a scout. There are no sign out here, Hoppy. He must have lost them in the dark. Is he uh, going to cash in? No, if I can get this barb out of him. Slice one of those flat cactus pads and toss it to me. Sure, I'm standing in the mess. Now to sterilize my knife and the flames. Uh, there. Here's the cactus pad. Good. Stay out there and keep your eyes peeled. Now, easy does it, fella. This will hurt a little. <laughs> Easy. Easy. That'll be over in a second. Now, hang on. <coughs> oh, there it's out. Now, just lie quiet. I have to cut the outside of this cactus pad away like this. I to stop that wound with it. There. Mm. Thanks, mister. I... Now, just rest. All I have to do is bind it. Now, here goes my clean shirt. Is, is it bad? No, you lost some blood, that's all. Here. All right. Yeah, that does it. California, come back and help pack. We'll have to take this man to the fort tonight. It's too risky in the daytime. Oh, I sure hate to face that saddle again. You won't be facing it, California, but stop fretting. There's something stranger for you to worry about. Yeah? What's that? Why in the middle of Apache country I dig a Pawnee arrow out of this man's back? <laughs> Back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Apaches Need No Guns. California's camp was entered by a scout with a Pawnee arrow in his back, although it is Apache country. After taking the arrow out of him, Hoppy and California carry the wounded man to Fort Los Alamos that same night. But it is slow riding, and daylight finds them still not quite to the fort. Oh, my, my. 
Hoppy, if we don't get there quick, I'll die. What's the matter? This riding giving you a headache? I get an ache, all right, but it ain't in my head. <laughs> How's the patient? Uh, what'd she say your name was? Breen. Jody Breen. Scout for, for Major Pincarrow. Scout, huh? Well, uh, you want to hear about the time I, I tangled with the coaches and a hundred brave single-handed? <laughs> Weren't they afraid of you? Well, sure there was. They, they... No, 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 Hoppy, darn it. Now, don't do that to me. Now, <laughs> now where was I? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I was surrounded by a hundred... Uh, 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 what's that? Four. Oh, no. Now, don't waste any words, eh? Just what is... Green it? means the fort is over the next hump. And stop gabbing. Uh, whose gabbing uh, was like this spring? I was surrounded by these 200 inches. Green, what happened? Where's the patrol? Well, speak up. Patrol jumped. Cactus Rock. Pawnees. All killed but me. Pawnees. Really, Breeden. This is Apache country, remember? Don't tell it to me. Tell it to those Pawnees. Breeden, come inside. I want your report. You two wait at the post store over there. I'll send for you in an hour. Uh, thanks. Come on, California. Yeah, you go ahead, Hoppy. I'll see to the horses first. Right. Wasn't that uh, Breen you brought in? Yeah. My name's Cassidy. Is the store open? Yeah, sure is. I'm Gannon, the storekeeper. More inside. Hey, I've heard about a gunslick called Cassidy. Uh, Hopalong is... Uh... Just talk. I'm no gunslinger, but my name's Hopalong. Well, maybe. But you fight a reputation as a fast draw. <laughs> I can't wait till you cross my Lattimore's Pass. <laughs> I'm looking for no trouble, Gannon. Don't stir up any. Oh, not me, Cassidy. Not me. I'm a coward, I am. Yeller, clear to my boot heels. Who's this uh, Vi Lattimore? Uh, Vi Lattimore heads a tough outfit that's mostly gunmen. Now, of course, I ain't saying right now that it's a crooked one. You're seeing uh, right smart, Gannon. <laughs> Vi? Name's Miss Lattimore, you. And hear me out, friend. I'll wear guns because I run a tough outfit. And I run a tough outfit because it's a hard country here, both. But it's straight. Savvy? Oh, oh yes, Miss Latimore. I savvy. Good. The only reason I'm not born you is because I'm not what you gave this stranger a hunter I was. Stranger, I'm by Latimore. I like your looks. You look straight and you don't blink. I reckon those guns are for use, not brag. You seem to have cut my trail, Miss Latimore. I'm looking for no quarrel, as I just told Gannon here. Call me Vi. I take it friendly you don't agree with Red Nose here. Oh, why, my dear young lady. I've been looking for you. Howdy, Walker. Decided not to sell, so I do. Now, now, wait. Now, wait. <laughs> oh, there's no need for us to be so brief. Maybe you'll change your mind. I represent a lot of money, my dear. Lots of ranches around here will get some of it. Not me. I'm not selling. So forget it. <clears throat> uh, well, very well, Vi, but well, let's have a drink over it, shall we? Take your hand off my arm. Oh, look, now, let's see here. At least you can be friendly. Walker, the lady doesn't want your company. You better go. You stay out of my affairs, cowboy. And you, Vi, come along. Let go of me. That's enough. Walker, get out and don't bother again. If the lady doesn't drill you, I'm likely to. What? Why, you wouldn't draw on an unarmed man, would you? No, but I would on a man wearing a hideout under his arm. Out. Don't stay back. Get away from me. That's right. Keep backing. Or go for that rod you're carrying. Back. Gannon, open that door for the gentleman. Right out the door. Keep backing. Oh, Walker. What is it? No. Watch out for that step. Oh, too bad you missed. Maybe that'll teach you to be more careful, Walker. Treat a lady like a lady. I'll fix you for this, you, you battle bum. Thanks. It saved me from boring that skunk. Well, I'll bore you, Gannon, if you talk about me again. Well, I won't say a word. I swear it. Uh, trouble, trouble. This post is just trouble. First, someone starts selling guns to the Apaches. Guns? Who sells guns to Apaches? Well, how do I know? 
Whoever's doing it must be crazy. Well, they might hurt somebody. Patsy sure don't need guns. Hey, what's that? Well, looks like the troop is pulling out. Well, that looks like the whole regiment. Major Pencara's not leaving the fort any protection at all. Sure, it's a... Oh, my gracious. I'm going to pack. We'll all be scouting our way. Hey, Hoppy, do you see them soldiers? That Nagoro's going to get a lesson he ain't wants? Yeah, I saw him. Come on, California. Sure, sure, but uh, what's the big rush? You'll see. Major Pancaro. Uh, what is it, Gasset? We make it brief. I don't mean to interfere, but aren't you leaving the fort shorthanded? Why, well, you young popinjay. I'm in command here, and I'm sick of you westerners whining about a handful of savages. I intend ridding this country of them for good. That's why I sent the regiment out. The Indians are west of here, not in the fort. West? But Bring was jumped in the east. A uh, stray raiding party of Pawnees. Nothing to bother about. Well, the scouts found the big Apache party to the west. Lieutenant Stone will engage it and destroy it. Uh, California, get our horses saddled. Now what do you think you're going to do? Scout the territory east of here, and you better pray, Major. If those Pawnees are enforced, your fort is in grave danger. Bobby, don't you think this is kind of dangerous for us? Uh, we don't know this country. That's uh, dangerous. Well, don't you think it'd be wiser to hit back to the fort? Probably. We might get scouts if we stay here. Possibly. Then let's turn around and burn leather. No, look ahead. Now to the right. Uh, 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 smoke signals. Let's get out of here. Not until we've taken a look, see. Come on, up around that big rock. We can look down on them from there. Stay here. I'll ease down on foot. You do what? Come now, Hoppy. Don't be an idiot. I'll come with you. Oh, look. Engines. Millions of engines. Not millions, but enough. Pawnees and Apaches. There must be at least 200 warriors. California hit the dust with the fort. They have to be warned. Sure, but you don't mean uh, you're going to save him. Go on, ride. Tell Major Pencaro that Nagoda is here and to prepare for immediate attack. I savvy a little Apache lingo. I'm going to visit that camp after dark and find out their plan. But that's certain death. If you get caught, Bill. I'll save a shot for myself. Now go on, high Taylor. Sure, sure, I'm a going, but but, uh, but in case I... Uh, I uh, oh, heck. Uh, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know, California. That's why we're partners. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Apaches Don't Need Guns. When Major Pencaro sent the entire force of Fort Los Alamos to engage Apaches to the west, Hoppy in California scouted to the east and discovered Nagodo and 200 Apache and Pawnee warriors preparing for war. As Hoppy stayed to try a daring venture of spying in the Indian camp, California races to warn the fort. Major Pencaro, engines, thousands of them. Get fort ready for attack. Hoppy said... Wait, wait. You're out of order, Carlson. You didn't even knock. Knock? Knock? I'll say that twice about those Indians. I'll say it twice. I'll say it three times. I'll whistle it, you hammer-headed gent. Are you deep? Get the fort ready and fight and say. But are you positive? The Apaches are to the west of here. Uh, well, there's Nagoto and 200 of them, counting some pony pals doing a war dance less than 10 miles east. And I'll give you a hunch they ain't doing that war dance for exercise. Yes, yes. Perhaps you're right. would be terrible if I'd been mistaken. Uh, my record. Yes, sir. Top blazes with your record. There's women and kids here. All right. Stable your horse. Tell Sergeant Dolson there to bring his squad to me immediately. Right, Major. Corporal Stein? Yes, sir. Open the armory. Issue guns to every man in the fort. Johnson? Get to the guardhouse. All prisoners to be released and back on duty at once. Adams? Yes, sir. Gather all the women and children in the blockhouse. Quick, man! All civilians to report to me without delay. Hurry! Right. Attention! 
Soldiers and civilians, where does come that this fort is under danger of possible attack? An attack that will outnumber us badly. Sergeant Olson will command the defense of the walls. Private Adams, that of the gate. Private Johnson will take eight men and defend the blockhouse. Corporal Stein, you will select five marksmen and act as roving defense, going where needed most. Your women will load guns in the blockhouse. There will be no relief until the danger of attack is over. That's all. Go to your post. Thousand. Hey, Major. I just want you to know that if this is a false alarm, I'll see to it that... Uh, anything more, Major? Get to your post. Right. Welcome to your party, amigo. Here's to your red skin. Yeah. Uh... Hey, oh, boy. Gee, ain't you a woman? Holding all report. Well, I can shoot better than these men here, both. Hey, where's your partner? I wish to know. Just wish I had my crew here. They show be handy. Well, look it. They're backing off. Run, down you. Uh, well, reckon they didn't aim to find us waiting for them. They'll be back. Sure mess of them out there. Yeah, uh... I re reckon Hoppy got there. Uh, I hope he saved that bullet. It seemed a right smart hombre. Reckon it did. Oh, did he? What? Look, there. Some fool's trying to bust through their lines and get to us. A bunch of engines. Look at him. A bunch of engines. Get him, girl. Get him. Get him. Unlock the gate for that man. Look at that hombre. Run. He's going to make it. Post, everyone. Cassidy, that was a magnificent ride. I compliment you. Okay. Oh, uh, am I glad to see you in one piece? Thanks, California. Major, I've bad news. Let's take care of those Indians first. Oh, that's just it. That group was only half in the Goda's forces. You were right. There are Apaches of the Western heading this way. Apaches plus a few straggling bunches of Sioux and Comanches that have jumped their reservation. Cassidy! You know what you're saying? Only too well. Nagoto is trying to gather all Indian tribes under his banner. Plans to take over this section and then join Geronimo. And then to take over all of Arizona, then the... Why, this is ghastly. We can't stand off this war party out there. Much less another party from the west. Uh, your regiment has probably made contact with the Indians west. If we can hold out here, they may come back to the fort. But, man, there's only 32 men left here. Not that many after that first attack. We're outnumbered eight to one. I'd hoped it wasn't that bad. And it may be several days before your regiment can return. Well, Major Fancaro, I hope you see how wrong you were. We'll all be slaughtered in here without a chance. Those Indians are using new Winchesters, not bows and arrows. Uh, you'll speed up the slaughter if you don't get back to your post. Four attacks. We can't stand many. Now, Gannon, yeah, drop a couple of boxes of forty-five for me. You mean you're one to thirty-three? Not carrying any knives, are you? This next attack may be close quarters. Yep, in my hip pocket. Help yourself. Miss Lattimore, what for you? I reckon I could do with some thirty-eight cartridges. Ah, uh, for a coward, you stand up right well, Gannon. Well, the past day and a half kind of made me a reformed coward, Cassidy. I figure if I got to die anyhow, may as well die like a blamed hero. Well, that's... Hey, everybody, what's up? Again, I'm ready. You can pull me by now. Well, I'll be doggone. Battle's just funny thing, Mr. Polk. Yeah, makes a man look inside himself. Hey, what's Walker doing down in the compound? Look, California. Well, I'll be switched. He's saddling the horse. And the way he thinks he's going. I guess he's riding for help. I'll get down and see. Hey, Walker, if you're riding for help, my horse is faster. Help? Don't be a fool. I'm getting out of here. Those Indians are using new Winchesters, and we can't win. You can play hero if you want, but I'm saving my neck. I see. You'll never make it, you know. that. I'll make it. It's nearly dark, and after dark, I can get through. If that fool Penkow hadn't sent the troop out, but he did. Only I'm not paying for it. Not me. Well, 
the flight we got till morning for the attack, Hoppy. The must plan and making it a good one. Uh, it'll be a bad one. Uh oh. There goes Walker. The darn yeller coyote I ought to plug him herself. That's his choice. But they'll be waiting for him. That's why Major Pencaros hasn't sent a man for help. And to think that polecat wanted to be a western rancher. Tally one coward. I tried to warn him. He should have stayed, Bray. Hey, Cassidy. Can I speak to you? Of course, Major. What is it? Uh, you saw what happened to Walker? It wouldn't have happened if you hadn't let him out. I couldn't force him to stay. He was a civilian. But what I started to say was, is there no way we could save the women and children? Could we sneak them out to Rio? But that's impossible. The Indians are expecting that very thing. I see. Well, I was just hoping that you... Major. Major Pancaro. Harry, one major. Take over Cassidy. Hoppy. Is he here? Yeah. Well, he was a fuss and feather soldier. But as a man, he'd do to ride the river with. He sure would. But now what? Uh, do we just wait for it? We do not. I've been thinking. Notice how Godo and his war chiefs always lead every attack on that gate? Quite. Yeah, yeah. They bunch up ahead of the others. Next time they attack, we're letting them in. We... Huh? Hoppy, uh, you're off. You're off. The Godo and his right-hand men are the leaders in spirit of this battle. If we can get rid of them, the others will scatter. I want to take every man able to swing a shovel and start building a pair of walls from that gate. Hoppy, you better lie Wait. down. You... I want a long, high wall shoot form like a funnel from that gate so when we let them in, they'll be forced in one or two at a time. Uh, shoot? Uh, you mean like we drive cattle to and Brandon? Right. Only too high for them to climb over. We're letting the goat and his war chiefs in, slam the gate behind them, and... Hoppy, I'll... we can't pull enough men off in the walls to fight them hand to hand. There'll be a dozen in that lead bunch. That's the point of the shoot. One man at the end of it. Working two guns can take them as they come through. That's my job. Oh, no, Hoppy. They'd massacre you. That's a gamble. We'll have to take it. The big thing is to make sure they don't suspect a trap, and that the rest of the men drive off this one attack. So tonight, while the shoot is being built, four men will stay on the walls, running back and forth, shooting from different loopholes to make it appear more. And for driving off the attack from the walls tomorrow. Every woman able to handle a gun. Every wounded man able to pull the trigger. I want all of them on the walls by daybreak. It's their only hope. Daybreak. Want to call the men? Yeah, it's about time. Everyone on the walls. Break out all the ammunition, Gannon. Knives and axes to each man. Instruct all the women to save one shot for themselves in case they fail to stop the attack. Same for the children. I'm on my way. Right, Cassidy. Mr. Hoppy, that shoot ain't very long. About 50 feet. That'll have to do. Hand me that box of shells, will you? I'll bring it with me. What? That shoot there's wide enough for two engines to come in at once. Reckon there ought to be two of us ready to drop them. Sure, but you... Ain't no use arguing with a woman, don't you know that? <laughs> you need a sidekick in that suit, and I reckon I qualify as the best two-handed gunslinger around here. Oh, uh, after you, sir. Well, looks as if they're getting ready to come at this, Gannon. Yeah. I wish I could shoot better. I give you a scatter gun with it. You just point, fool, and pray. Hey, uh, one thing, how are we going to be sure that only Nagoto and his chiefs get through that gate? Well, as soon as they get inside, the boys will slam the gate shut. And to make sure they have time, you aim that scatter gun into the engine follow them. We'll slow them enough. Hey, here they come. Look at them run. Hold it with that gun. Wait for the time. Wait. No! Let them have it. Nagoto's bunch is inside. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Hoppy, I still can't believe it. We licked him. Uh, when they saw we finished in the goat on the chief, the rest ran like jackrabbits. But don't ever take a chance like that again. Okay? Uh, it worked. And I'm not hurt bad, so stop pacing. Not hurt bad? He says two knife wounds in your shoulder, a slug in your leg, not to mention a couple of creases. Uh, uh, what would you call bad? A uh, coffin? How's fly? Oh, she's all right. Just a couple of scratches. Hi there. Let's 
You two don't know what I hit from a wounded engine. Yeah, you heard that Walker sold the guns to Nagoto, so the Apaches would go on the warpath, wipe out the ranches around here, and give him a chance to buy the spreads for a song afterwards. Well, but me. Sure, that's it. You'll steal my thunder. <laughs> Sorry, Vi, I guessed it before. These Indians in this country are too poor to pay much of a profit on those guns. That meant a man with another motive, which was Walker. He gave himself away when he knew what kind of guns the Apaches had. Well, he's playing back part, and he got his comeuppance from his own treachery. Bandy is. Bandy is, anyone? Whiskey. Whiskey? For uh, medicinal purposes, of course. Harry <laughs> Gannon, you did a brave job of fighting. And I bring news. Lieutenant Stone sent a rider in. The regiment met and defeated the Apaches to the west. Uh, did you say I was brave, sir? <laughs> I did, sir. And I want you to know, sir, that I am a reformed hero. Bravery is too nerve-wracking. I am and always will continue to be a self-respecting coward. Oh, yeah? Back to your post. The Indians are coming. Fire! Where's my shotgun? I'll slaughter the... Uh, I've been tricked. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mighty close call for Hoppy. But Hoppy's usual... Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe.